He's listening. Commissioner Chair Cohen and Commissioners, my name is Kathy Heltzer and I live in Duluth. I have traveled to Ely today to speak to you regarding the recently proposed Nelson Code of Conduct, which I believe is on your agenda today. I was at the Committee of the Whole meeting on December 11th when your own county attorney advised you that this draft code was not legally sound, having no specific consequences for violations, and placing firmly in your hands the option of even reviewing complaints at all. It is my belief that the actions of this board that launched the We Are Watching campaign, asking for accountability in the way that you conduct yourselves, would have been impacted little had this draft code been in effect at that time. Thus, the concerns that have prompted citizens of St. Louis County to come to this meeting today, as well as many over other meetings over the last four months, continue to be largely unaddressed, in spite of what some of you apparently believe to be a solution in the Nelson Code. I ask that you consider supporting the recently amended version to make this legally sound as well as externally enforceable. Please do not think that something is better than nothing and enact poor public policy today here at your final board meeting of 2007. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, you got a question? Yeah, just one. Question by Commissioner uh, Faber. I've been reading and listening to some comments, and I'm having a little trouble defining externally enforceable. Can you do that for me, please? Certainly that would mean that those, it would mean exactly what is in the amendment, which is that a neutral party would then be responsible for investigating alleged violations of the code of conduct. Clearly externally enforceable would not mean that those people on the board, some of whom may in fact have complaints lodged against them, would be responsible for investigating any any uh, violations. So, Mr. Commissioner, I think I really don't think we should get in dialogue you. with people speaking. You know, they're going to speak their thoughts on this issue and get into cross examining. <coughs> uh, but, Mr. It's Chair, is you, you can certainly debate that when it comes back to us. This is time to hear from the public. Mr. Chair, you surprised us with some language today. I'm going to continue to call on people because we have Commissioner Nelson's requested that, and this is the part where we hear from the public. So we have a, a list, and next is Phil Stern. Chairman Cohen and uh, Commissioners, my name is Phil Stern. I live in Duluth. The very first county commissioner meeting I ever attended was the meeting when you first made the correct choice to develop a code of conduct that would allow the public to give their trust back to the whole board after a few of its members chose to behave so poorly. I made the trip to Ely to urge you to have the courage to reject the current draft proposal on the agenda today and come up with something uh, that will have consequences and be enforceable. As public leaders of our Northland community, uh, you as elected officials need to conduct yourselves with civility and integrity and show your respect for each other and our county employees by passing a strong and enforceable code. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Lynn Clark Peck. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Lynn Clark Pegg and I live in Duluth, Minnesota. As a member of the We Are Watching group, I have attended a number of county board meetings, committee of the whole meetings, and board workshops. I feel that our presence has been needed because of inappropriate conduct of some of the commissioners, both within official board meetings and while on board business. External monitoring and review is essential to develop uh, accountability and to regain public trust. Today I want to speak specifically to the proposed Commissioner Nelson version of the Code of Conduct. Unfortunately, it does not address the need for accountability, nor does it provide a process of independent and neutral investigation and determination of consequences for violation of behaviors. I strongly urge you to adopt a Code of Conduct that is legally sound and will have the capacity to regain public trust. Thank you. Marlene Hart. Thank you, 
commissioners. Um, I didn't prepare a speech because I decided to just speak from my heart. And <clears throat> I have actually been on the receiving end of this kind of harassment. And I know what it feels like. It makes a person feel very helpless and hopeless and powerless. And I just want to say that if a person has a, an out and can do something about it, it gives them back that power. So I would just speak to you and, and tell you to please pass something that has some guts to it and, and has some consequences, because that's what people need. That's what your, the citizens that you're representing, re representing need. So thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bob? Tammon. Mr. Chair, Commissioners, I'm Bob Tammon from Sudan. My uh, wife Pat couldn't be here today. She's teaching in the Ely school system. And I mentioned that to bring up the point that when Pat came here in 1964, the Ely School District did not hire married teachers. It was one of the last districts in the state that granted that right to women, something we take for granted now. I'd also like to mention that within the last year, we had an Ely City Councilor during a job interview mention that Ely needed more breeders. Now, I don't quite understand the culture that thinks we're going to attract young families to Ely and build a healthy community, but their little daughters are expected to grow up to be breeders. Now, I'm a 65-year-old white male, and I've made some substantial attitude adjustments in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the issue here is that a few board members need to make a su substantial attitude adjustment. And I hope that you'll pass a vigorous code of conduct and not the watered down version that's been brought to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tom is left. Tom is left. Tom is left. Okay. Ellen O'Neill. Chairman Crone and County Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to address you today. My name is Ellen O'Neill and I live in a rural township in St. Louis County. I took a day of vacation today to be here today. I'm here because I came to ask you before I knew anything else was on the table about an amendment to vote no on the current draft of the Code of Conduct and to take accountability seriously by putting teeth and substance back into a revised Code of Conduct. In September, you publicly promised the re residents of St. Louis County a code of conduct that would hold the county board accountable. You instructed staff to draft such a code, and they did. The current version of the code does not resemble the staff version and basically has stripped the code of substance and has no teeth. There are no consequences for viola violate, violating it. It gives the board the power to set up its own rules and regulations in response to a complaint on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no required training. There, you're encouraged to attend, but there's no requirements. There's no definition of inappropriate behavior such as bullying or lack of civility, and there are no remedies. Accountability is more than a fox and a chicken supposedly discussing what to have for dinner. <laughs> Please revise the code and truly make it a conduct of con conduct with accountability. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Mary. <coughs> Hello, my name is Bob Mary. I live in Iron, Minnesota. I've been a township supervisor for this is my 30th year. Uh, I want to commend this board of commissioners for the good job they've done in the last four or five years and the good job they're doing. <coughs> My, my thoughts on a code of conduct, these are all well-educated and talented people, and I figure you can govern what you have to on your merits. I feel it shouldn't be up to another board to scrutinize you people 
If I have trouble with my commissioner, I think we'll take care of him at election time. As far as I'm concerned, you are all doing a good job, and uh, both the amendment that your both the rules that you have in line. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our, our list. I have Anyone else wish to speak? Please come forward. State your name for the record. I'll sign in. I just sign in for the record. My name is Clyde Nelson. I live in uh, Lakewood Township. And I've been listening to some of the people here. I wasn't going to speak today, but until I heard this amendment, I began to think about it. I did prepare some remarks just in case, but I suspect there might be some. Listening to some of the people here, it sounds like they want to set up a commission to sit in judgment of you. Well, let me tell you something. For the most part, you and the supporters of the action who want to sit in judgment have forgotten one person. That's the voter. We have the power, and any attempt to transfer our power to another body is arrogant. Any action that assumes that we, the voters, are incompetent to use our power to recall or vote out of office elected officials is downright wrong. Minnesota as well as federal law clearly states what is proper provides a remedy by law. The Minnesota statute clearly states the procedures for removal of elected officials who violate the law or is deemed to be incompetent. While I am, while I'm at it, for the, for the most part, the most recent incident, accusation of sexual harassment left a lot of questions and some suspicions as to the motives of the accusers and their supporters. Elected officials work for the people who voted for them. They do not work for the employees of the county or any committee or organization to which you might assign your authority. You work for us, the voter, and we don't want another person usurping our authority. By doing what some here want would be a clear case of the inmates wanting to run the asylum. I can't imagine this body would be willing to give up their authority to the very people they employ. That's the real issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, uh, we have Kristen Larson on the list next. You can go first, right. sir. You're already up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Please state your name for the record. My name is uh, Jim Hart from Beauty. H A R T. H -A -R -T. Uh, I wasn't going to speak either, but hearing the last two speakers uh, were members, I gather, of town boards. And as a, a former member of a town board, I don't know that the relevancy of town board government, the county government, uh, is fully uh, uh, under view. I am concerned over the fact that a commissioner of this board is elected for a four-year term. Uh, the county uh, election uh, leaves a long period of time before the voters have a chance to uh, address conduct of a commissioner in office. And I think it would be very important when that election came three, two, three, or four years after the particular conduct complained of, that there had been a determination of whether that challenge, a charge, uh, of that agreement has been adjudicated, a determination made that the board itself has passed on, so that the electorate might have a clear view of what the hell they have to vote on. I appreciate you have a difficult decision, but I think the uh, editorial writer for the Duluth the Tribune last Sunday put it pretty clearly. You have a path you can follow, and that's to prove the amendment that's been presented today and adopt them the amendment uh, code of conduct. I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Kristen, No, no, Mr. Chair, I, I, I do not want to miss any of the speakers, and I would at this point request a very brief personal privilege so that I do not have to miss any of the speakers. <laughs> I 
can ask it a hundred other ways, but it's supposed to be a yes. <laughs> highly charged with anger, but I need you to know that as a member of the public, I find it very difficult to follow what's going on in this happening. In addition, on three occasions, I was told something by commissioners that was, in the most polite terms, a misstatement of fact. I subsequently determined that at least one member of the board represented the will of the entire board inaccurately to another unit of government. As a result, I have lost trust in this body, and I strongly urge you to develop a code of conduct that, along with all else, requires you to be honest with the public. Additionally, and perhaps unfortunately most concretely, our county needs to defend itself from liability to pay legal defense, judgments, and settlements when it is charged with providing with not providing a safe workplace. There's no real practical means of removal from office, nor is anybody that I've heard seeking that, but a clear way for the facts of the matters that come up to reach the public who will ultimately decide. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Hart? Just go by the list. Talk a lot of less, and then I'll keep going. I'll keep Jim, more done. Yeah, Jim Mark. He's already spoken. Okay, I was going to sorry. <coughs> uh, then there was Scott, who. Can you all say it again, Scott? Thank you for the opportunity to talk. Uh, my name is Scott Mead. Uh, I live in Pequon Township. I'm a town supervisor, and I support the amendment that you. Given. I think each one of us as elected officials should be accountable and I welcome accountability. There should be a process where, where we uh, are responsible for our actions and uh, I think public trust is something that is really key here. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Now I saw a hand. Uh, please come sure. forward. State your name for the record. And I didn't know if you haven't already. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Lucan <coughs> in Denison Township. And a little pause here while I sign in. I'd like to clarify the, the, an idea that came up a little earlier that uh, a member of the board cannot be removed until the very next election comes along. Well, in terms of state statute um, 351, 351.16 petition review subdivision 1, any registered voter may petition the county auditor 
requesting the removal of election and setting forth the facts which allege with specificity the elected county officials committed malfeasance or nonfeasance. I won't read the, the details here, but what it says, a petitioner must attach to petition documents which contain signatures of supporters who are registered voters of at least 25% of the persons, number of persons who voted in the preceding election for the office, which must be held by the county officials named in the petition. And it goes on to say, registered voters must be residents of the county or in the removal election of a county commissioner of the commissioner district for which the elected uh, named county commissioner. The signatures of the supporters must be on the forms provided by the county auditor. So it is certainly possible to remove a county commissioner before the next election. The big problem I have with the current situation is that the way it's set up now, what we have is judgment by newspaper. And I think that's wrong. Thank you. Anyone else? Please come forward uh, over there and then. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. My, my name is Vicki Nelson, and I'm here from Cherry Township. I didn't plan on speaking today. However, um, given the information, I'm here um, in support of the women who've been coming up from Duluth. And I, I just wanted the, the uh, board to know, the commissioners to know that it's not just Duluth people who are concerned about this issue. Um, I'm speaking to you today as a resident of the county, but also I come to you with 24 years of experience working in the Water Women's Movement, both locally nationally and as of last year with a, uh, speaking in Germany about the issues of domestic violence. And while this isn't that issue, we are here talking about behaviors. And one thing I've learned is that we've all grown up in a culture that has allowed for certain behaviors to go past us. We've learned some things are okay. And we're starting to see that those behaviors don't always work. And so when we're talking about accountability, and we talk about this a lot when we're working with batterers, but I think it applies to all of us, we're not talking about chastising someone for acting in a way that they've been told was okay for years. But we're asking that you all, and we're asking all of ourselves too, to be accountable for that, and to learn from that, and to learn new ways of behavior and interacting with each other. And I think that's what everyone's here is, is saying to us, is saying that accountability isn't saying you're a bad person, leave. It's saying, hey, you messed up, and we're going to help you learn other ways of, of operating in relationships with others. And it's a long process. You know, I've had to learn it myself. Um, however, it's not undoable. And I'm here to really um, encourage you to think about it in those terms. Uh, all of us work within programs, and my program is a nonprofit at Rainbow Women's Advocates, has sexual harassment policies. Our funders require us to have those policies in place and require us to outline the, pre uh, the policy and the procedures for dealing with it. I don't think it's unusual, and unfortunately, when you're in the public eye, you, you do have a lot of people watching. Um, but that's not something to say, you know, again, that I'm ashamed of, but that I need to be accountable and responsible and to learn from that, and, and that's what I hope you're hearing. And I encourage you to really uh, think about a, a policy or a code of conduct, as it's being called, that will um, that will really be responsible and accountable. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Betty Price from Ely, and I just wanted to briefly say that. Um, as a previous woman mentioned, her organization has FIRTH, F-I-R-T-H. Um, they have a structure in place. Um, most businesses of any size have a structure in place to deal with issues. And I would think that you also would want to have some objective um, mediator, facilitator, however that would be structured, for your own um, protection. Because if someone does come up with an accusation that is 
inaccurate? Do you want that just to be judged in the newspapers and not have a, a place to speak? Um, and certainly people that, the employees that work with you should have that opportunity too. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak to this issue?